so you didn't have many conflicts, but you had you had a notable dispute with Harvick. Yep. Multiple times it seemed like. Yep. Um, Jay Sauter came into the car and threw a punch at you. Is that no, true? Uh, uh, vice versa. Uh, yeah, vice versa. You threw a punch he at him. Punch. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, that was at Richmond. Yeah. I remember that. Xfinity race. Yep. You, so, so I was being probably a little aggressive, and we had a full – we had just the field stacked up behind us. There was a full straightaway in front of us, and he was holding everyone up. I nudged him a little bit off of two, and uh, probably the nudge, he wasn't able to hold on to it, and he wrecked. And so he went in the pits and said, I'm going to fix my car and go back out and wreck him. And that's what he did. Yeah. You know, we were, we were running for a championship. He comes back out on the track and just wipes me out off of, off of turn four. That's right. Did that, did that punch land? Yes. And did he have his helmet still on? Uh, he did. And so. But there was no Hans. And I punched him right in the collarbone on the side of the neck, right under the helmet. Ah, you found I'm a, not going to punch him a, in the helmet. You found a vulnerable spot and yes, went for I it. Yes, I did. So I was upset. Yeah, sure. But what did he? Did y'all have a conversation afterwards? Ever? No, we did. I think later on. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it was. But that not, was the end of it. I was looking around the infield care center when I was over there. I was still pretty upset. H- had you ever done anything like that up until that point? Had you ever punched somebody in a car? And had you ever been in fights out of the car? Not. Not really. Yeah. Not particularly. Yeah. I mean, not at the racetrack. When so. you when Harvick <laughs> come over the roof of the car at Bristol, did you think did you were you shocked? Uh, I wasn't I wasn't really shocked. So that punch, Jay Sauter cost me fifteen thousand dollars. Oh, and Roush Fenway made me pay for it out of my money. Mm. And they they penalized me points. So I got points taken away and a fifteen thousand dollar fine. So fast forward to the next year, when we're at Bristol and I give Harvick the little nudge, the bump and run, and he, he, he you watch the video, he he overcorrects and just drove it straight in the fence to the right, you know. And I'm not gonna say I'd have saved it or he'd have saved yeah. it, <laughs> whatever. But it, it's, you know. So when I saw Harvick coming and my crew guy said, "Hey, here, you know, he's coming oh, down." Oh, you knew here. he was coming. Yeah, yeah. And I said, "I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna touch him. I'm not doing nothing. I'm gonna keep my hands to my side." Because I would have, you know, if that wouldn't have happened, if I wouldn't have got fined and that, I probably would have hit him with uppercut, just knocked him out right as he jumped off the back of the car. You know, I mean, yeah. I, I would have. But I'm like, I, I just kept my hands to my side. I said, I'm not doing anything because I'm leading the points and I'm trying to win the title. And they they took away. In the same and situation. you still remember from a year ago where you had the points and oh, the fine. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I got a stark lesson on – no fight NASCAR then, okay, not today. NASCAR then was no bullshit. There's no fighting. Mm. There's no. There's none of that. So and my, was, what I re- <laughs> what I can remember from that is that that um, obviously the media plays this up, right? Sure. So the the thing happens at Bristol and the media plays it up, and, and I mean I don't know. We still, we just now stop seeing that when, I, we, when we go I, to Bristol. It might actually come back I up know. this weekend. I know. But uh, <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. So I used to I used to hate that as a driver, but now I understand oh, yeah. why it sells well, sells tickets. But there was a lot going on. It wasn't just you and Harvick. Jimmy Spencer and Jack Sprague were also. Uh, he, Jack is running down the front straightaway. Oh, I didn't and know that. They the same, at the same race. Same. Not only the same race, but that fight is about to happen because I'm working for Spencer. Jimmy sent Jack just hard into the wall, and they were all racing in the top three. And uh, Jack is running down the straightaway after Spencer, and that's about to happen. As soon as that happens, though, Harvick comes off, and both of those drivers are now watching y'all. Y'all, if you want to look at the silver lining, you did avoid another fight. That's good. Yeah, if that makes you feel any better. Because Jimmy now is up on the wall waving his towel, Getting the fans excited because there's this big melee going on at yeah. your car. So I mean that there's just it's funny you say that NASCAR did not like fights because it all would have unraveled that day. Oh, <laughs> and, and I think that later on I think they recognized that that brings attention to fans. Yeah. And in 2000, whatever year it was, you, they didn't need any more fans and attention. They already had it. Yeah. But yeah. as that declines, you're like, okay, what can we do to to make something exciting? Right. But the the rival the thing with Harvick carried on a little bit. It did. I think we had a run in like at Martinsville one time in practice. Yeah. You know, and w- w- he pulled out in front of me. We're making a run or vice versa. And then brake check 
me or something like that. So I went down, had some words with him about that, you know. Yeah, so, I remember that. It almost just looked like a misunderstanding that you guys kind of handled uh, civilly, right? We did. Like, like, we you, did. You I guys just, go talk. Yeah, I just walked down there and said, you know, did you mean to pull out in front of me? You didn't see me. Spotter didn't see you. I don't, I don't remember exact conversation, you know, but we, we talked about it and, you know. And that was that. That was that. So, for, and then you, you know, for the rest of your cup career. We got along fine. Got along great. Yeah. The situation with um, Kurt and the 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 wives and girlfriends on the pit box. <laughs> how how did you view that experience? And what was so? I you know we watching that. Um, I didn't. I mean, I'm. I'm it's I pretty entertaining. I know. I would have, but I would have probably said, "You can't do that." I did. But I was in the car. That was on the TV. <laughs> right. <laughs> Everybody saw you. What uh, did you do? I, I, that's exactly what I said. I probably, you, if you would have had a tape recorder, you just said it. <laughs> you, I mean, and I think after the fact, she felt the same way, was embarrassed about it because she didn't do it for TV. No. <laughs> no. It, it, you know, she did it because she was pissed yeah. and their friends, oh, kind of, we're all friends. Yeah, everybody. And you're gonna and and she was like you're gonna he's gonna hurt somebody. What happened on the racetrack? He he just he was, I think he was pissed about something. I don't know what, but it was the very end of the back stretch at Texas, and he just he turned just you. just turned me, just caught my bumper. I don't know if I moved up a little bit to get an arc down in the corner, but anyway, he just you know I don't know if he's pissed at Roush, yeah, whatever the case might be, right? So it Kurt's Kurt, cool. and you know that's that's what was happened. Is that the end of that? That was into that, yeah. So, um, <laughs> Boris said. Oh yeah, I love this one. So I, me and Boris are friends. Yeah, and I I'm can't friends with Boris too. I can't believe Boris being that mad at anybody. Um, but apparently, you know, whatever happened on the racetrack, uh, I can. I mean, Watkins Glen produces some of the some of those moments. It's Watkins Glen is kind of like the Madden. Uh, uh, Xbox game will make some of best friends. I remember hate Dale, each other's guts. Yeah, Dale Jarrett was mad at you that day. <laughs> oh yeah. So so it's a funny story because him and I we had a we had a little run in earlier in the race. He was a I, I think he was a lap down, and we we had a run in. Yep. And you know I don't remember what it was, but it wasn't significant. You know it was it was yep. not really at all significant we had some issue brake issue something in the race so we're multiple laps down we had to pit and fix it so we're green white checkered at uh at Watkins Glen y'all are near the back I'm in the very back yeah I, I'm not even in I'm not even in the race yeah he purposely purposely hooks David Reagan well the, the, he's multiple laps down David Reagan I think was a, maybe a lap down Hooks David Reagan on the after turn one. That a short big crash. Trip. Hooks David Reagan, sends him into that wall. He flips upside down. Yeah. Comes across the track, slams into that wall. I slow down and I'm like, what was that for? I mean, like literally uh, on purpose yeah. because, you know, we were all at the back. There was, they weren't even racing for position. Yeah. You know, and, and I have no idea why that happened. And so then I, I gave him, you know, told him he was number one. So you flipped him off. The rest of the way back. And, you know, I don't know if I, what else I did, but I didn't wreck him or anything, yeah. but the rest of the way back and all the way in the pits. Okay. You know, I and told that him. Was what and that's what, caught, that's what got him fired up. Yeah. Was I was. So he came over to your. So I pull in. Get out of my car, and I'm I'm mad because the, my teammate just went head on into Hard the wall wreck. and upside down across Nasty the racetrack yeah. for no reason, and so I'm just I, I'm shaking mad that that at that uh, part time driver comes in and does that to to uh, a guy for who doesn't matter who it is. So I, my team guy hands me a bottle of water. Right, I take the cap off, take a drink of it, and and he pulls up. Boris pulls up. Beside my car, you know, in you know, we pull up behind our transporters. Yeah, his transporter, he's over there. We, you know, we're top 
five in t- points yeah. or top ten in points. He pulls up and is flailing his arms and he's doing all this and you know uh, doing all that. And I sort of lost my cool. And he had his window net down and his helmet off and was trying to get out of his car. And I took the water bottle and it was a really good shot from about. <laughs> Ten feet away, I threw the water ball as hard as I could and just beamed him in the side of the head. Oh, no! <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I was upset. Yeah. And so and so then I went running over there to the side of the car. He was still in the car. And I grabbed his steering wheel, and, you know, we were, we were having some... Tug, tug of war. So we were having some tug of war because I was going to beat him with that steering wheel. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> What? Yeah, I don't He's know. He's a big guy. He's a big guy, yeah. but he was still in the car. Yeah, you're trying to keep him in there. So <laughs> Take a steering wheel. So anyway. We're going to wrestle, but you're staying in the car while we're doing that. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, then guys come in and break it up. Yeah. You know. And, and he's hotter than hell. He's, he's hotter than hell. hell. Finally gets out of the His car. He's a classic. Yeah, and my, my guy's got a hold of me, and my feet are about that far off the ground and, <laughs> yeah. you know so it was that was that was that did y'all you know. have conversations later oh yeah 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 you laugh about it today yeah we laugh about he's it he's a good dude it's funny he is if you like that conversation with greg biffle listen to the entire interview the dale jr download it's available on all major podcast platforms